Hello and welcome to the first of a series of videos providing a basic guide to Battlefleet Gothic Armada. So the idea with these guides is to provide a basic overview of each of the races, the ships, the upgrades and or some basic tactics for each of the races. I'm going to start off with Imperial Navy and for this first video we're going to look at the different ships available to them and some of their basic characteristics and weapons. So, we're going to start at the bottom and as you can see here we have the transport. This ship's only available in the transport mission and you will need to protect them. So, by the time you reach level 8 you will have three upgrade slots available for them. Other than that, there's really not much to them. More or less, you want to pretty much just try and rush them to the other side. So even though they do come with a light double macro turret, forward facing 270, not really going to do much. Not really worth talking about. They do have the escort ship characteristic. So as you can see, vulnerable to area of uh, effect attacks. Um, but also smaller target. So for macro weapons anyhow, uh, there will be an accuracy penalty to shooting at him, which is a positive in helping you keep him alive. Loyal, fairly standard loyalty here for all Imperial ships. 30% at 30% of hull integrity, 12% for line ship loss, 3% for escort. In saying that, with escort ships and the transport ship, loyalty doesn't matter as they will never warp out. Imperium Maneuvers, so they have the all ahead full and high energy turn. We'll look more at these in when we get to tactics. And accuracy, like I said before, these things really aren't going to be getting involved in combat, so not much of a, a, a need here for it. But again, this is the same across the Imperial, all Imperial ships, so 3k 80%, 6k 60, 9k 40, and 12k. 20%. As for orders, they have all the standards, and this is pretty much the same across most of the races. Reload, this will speed up how quick your combustion gauge uh, activates or recharges. This is very good for these particular ships as you want to be getting them across the board as quick as possible. Lock on, this is essentially to make their shooting better. Bracer Impact, another one that can be useful for these ships uh, in helping to defend them. Uh, as you can see, it raises the ship's armor by 20 and reduces the enemy's accuracy by 20 points. Uh, as it does say there, the additional armor is still effective against armor piercing damages. Uh, yeah. And running silent. So, if you're playing against the computer, not particularly useful. Uh, against a human opponent, on the other hand, this could be useful in helping to hide them while you try and get them across the map. And emergency repairs. So two whole points a second. It's active for 45 seconds, so a total of nine whole points, which, as we can see over here, they have 200 of. So not quite half of your total hull can be repaired. Detection range is 5,000. This is fairly standard across all ships. Troop value of 60. This is uh, used in defense against boarding actions or any type of assault action. So it has three turrets. So these are not uh, offensive turrets. These are defensive turrets. So when missiles or ordnance, uh, ordnance being uh, fighters, bombers, and troop transports are uh, within range, they will open fire, three, not exactly going to do a lot, but still it's some form of defense. So our armor, we have a front armor of 50, side armor of 25, and back armor of 25. So realistically, you want these things getting shot from the front if possible, but you're probably not gonna be spending much time trying to orientate these things. You're just gonna be trying to rush them through. Rotation, 20 degrees, again not big, you want these guys just travelling in a straight line as much as possible to that other side of the map. Speed 112, so this is fairly standard for transport ships across all races. They tend to be really slow, at least in comparison to the other ships of their race. And 
yeah, it does make it more difficult, but hey, if these things could travel overly fast, the game type for these would not be particularly difficult. And shield 250. So this is actually fairly high. Uh, I actually currently have the upgrade coming in an extra 50, so this do start off with only 200 standard. This is actually quite high for a ship of this size. Uh, escort ships in general only have 100. Hell, even the light cruisers generally only have 100 shields. So they are relatively tanky for what they are. All right, so moving on to our first of our combat ships in the escort ships. So here we have the destroyer. Uh, sword and as you can see it comes with light double macro turrets two of them two attacks three damage each reload time of three seconds this is one of the downsides the projectile can be targeted by defense turrets and squadrons I have seen entire waves like this one here only launches two but I've seen entire waves of the larger amounts the eight being taken out before they even get near their target so they are armor piercing though, so light lancers, they do count the enemy armor as 25%. They do 45 damage, they're on a 45 second cooldown. Unlimited range, so you can shoot across the map if you want. Critical chance of 11% though, obviously this is quite high. Now, while it does say angle of fire, front, realistically, uh, when you hover over these in game, you will see lines showing the path that they're going to travel along and it's up to you to then make the judgment call because they do have a travel time and this is probably one of their biggest downsides is trying to judge especially at the longer ranges when you fire whether you will actually hit your target or not you can also hit your own ships with these and they will do damage so that's another thing to take into consideration am i going to have another ship of mine cross paths with these before they get to the enemy so these are just some of the things that need to be thought about with the torpedo launches. Again though, we'll talk more in depth about those during the tactics. So shields, a bit lower here at base 100, uh, the 150 for the upgrade. So yeah. The Widowmakers. As you can see, same hull type as our previous Cobra. This though comes only with the torpedo launcher. That is the only thing on the ship. But is what this does have over every other ship. Double the detection range. A 10,000 detection range. As you can see, even with upgrades, I can only get to 7,500 otherwise. So they have another 2,500 on top of that. Their sole purpose is to act as forward observers they will be able to see enemy ships at quite a long way away now while they're all listed as destroyers the one thing i'm going to point out is that the widow makers and cobras are probably what i would refer to as frigates with the firestorm and sword being actual destroyers being that slightly larger hull so you see here the 200 versus the 100 and that is noticeable in game right so moving on to the first of our proper ships, the light cruisers. So you have the Dauntless and the Dauntless Mark II, as you can see here. So we'll talk about each of these in turn. So, torps. So now we're up to a medium torp launcher, so this one fires four torps as opposed to the two on our escort class ships. We have two light double macro turrets on top here, and they're the same. Uh, yes, the critical chance is higher, uh, that's because I spent crew points to increase that. Again, we'll talk about this. Same as our escort ships though, 270 degree front, so they're going to hit pretty much as long as the enemy isn't behind you, which is a positive. And 6,000 range. And our main weapons, the light macro batteries. Six attacks, as you can see, one for each of the actual turrets. Six damage, nine second reload time on this. 90 degrees from your side. So that's 90 degrees as we look at the ship this way. So sort of at this angle. Does sort of mean a ship can be slightly behind you here a little bit and get hit if they're at a decent range from you, which is useful at times. 
overall fairly solid. So now that we're into our proper ships, we do have a few more orders though. We have our enter the webway, which should be enter the warp realistically. And as you can see, it has a 15 second delay. So once you hit it, you have to wait 15 seconds. This is presuming that your generator has not been taken out. If your generator has been taken out, this is double. It does have a 180 second cooldown and it starts the game on cooldown. That means you have three minutes of game time before you can try and warp out. So, generally speaking, you will use these to try and escape battle if you're taking a heavy damage. And as it says there, if an enemy ship performs a successful assault action on the ship during that delay time, it will disable the warp jump. So boarding action. So this is, as it says there, 2,500 degrees from your broadsides in a 90 degree arc, much like our broadside weapons. So cooldown, uh, the cooldown here is actually a bit reduced from its standard. Again, I've spent some crew points on that. Uh, essentially, is what we do here is send across some uh, assault ships. And as it says there, we get two assault actions. Assault actions can result in a number of different uh, results. So as it says there, it can deal permanent critical damages. Yay, we can take out subsystems. Uh, as previously mentioned, this is one of the ways of trying to cancel the warp on a ship that is attempting to warp out. But it has two other results. So we have uh, essentially damage to the hull causing a hull breach, uh, which does a fairly decent amount of hull damage. And then we have uh, fire. These things are capable of starting fires. Fires do damage over time uh, at a fairly decent rate, but can be put out by using the emergency repairs. And then we have lightning strike. So this is 5,000 range in all directions around the ship runs on the exact same cooldown. So using one will start the cooldown on both. So as it says there though, the difference as opposed to our boarding actions is that it can only deal temporary critical damages. So our boarding actions are capable of doing permanent. Lightning strikes are only capable of doing temporary. Also, these are the two things that your troop value protects you against. Now the other thing with Lightning Strike is that the shields on the enemy ship have to be down for you to be able to use them. So, that's our Mark II. What's the difference with just the normal Dauntless? Well, we lose our Torps and gain a Heavy Prowl Lance. Much the same as the Prowl Lance we already looked at on the Firestorm. Except here we're getting 24 damage with an 8 second cooldown. So this can be very good at putting damage onto an enemy ship. But, as you can see, it is a 90 degree forward facing weapon. And you can see it highlighted and sticking out here. So, given that the most of our damage is going to come off of our macro batteries with only their 9 second cooldown for that 6 damage from each of them, it really does become quite a choice as to which one you want to do. You could face forward and you're gonna get these and the Prowl Lance, or you can circle the enemy and get this plus your light double macro. So they're going to hit either way. I personally tend to prefer using the macro batteries. They're more reliable. Uh, you tend to find Prowl Lance or Lances in general are weak against shields, macros are just generally better all round. Again though, we'll discuss this more in the tactics. So, the other common things between the two. We have hull integrity of 600, detection of 5000, our troop value here of 60, 9 defense turrets, forward armor of 75, which is a big thing with the Imperials. They have this as you can visually see this heavy amount of armor at the front here on the prow and then 50 50. 
So other than the front, they just got fairly medium armor. 75, as I was saying before, highest in the game. Rotation at 20 degrees, speed 188. Uh, 100 is the base shields. I have put the shield upgrade on each of these ships. Right. So our traits, Loyal, Imperial Maneuvers, and Imperial Accuracy, same across the board. So, our cruisers. So I have three ones here. So what we're actually going to do is we're just going to select one because there is actually quite a list. So, as you can see, we have here the Dictator. Yes, it's quite an interesting name. Hull Integrity 800, Shield 200, Speed 150. You'll notice pretty much all the ships from Cruiser and above have a speed of 150. Rotation 10 degrees, so half of the rotation capability of a light cruiser. Armor, same as our light cruisers. 12 turrets, 60 troop value, and a detection range of 5,000. As you can see, these are fairly standard. So, its weapon loadout is our heavy torpedo launchers so we're now getting six torpedoes macro battery four attacks 18 damage 12 second cool down our crit chances are getting quite good though at 4.5 percent again that range is 6,000 and ordnance launchers so this is the first time we've looked at ordnance so ordnance when we get into the game itself you will see that you have three options um, you have bombers uh, assault boats and, and fighters. Bombers and assault boats require targets. You can also, well you can auto them all if you want, but realistically not worth it with the fighters. Fighters, once you click them, is all it does is place them out and they'll protect the ship. They are purely a defensive option. Well, I say purely they will actually attempt to attack things that get within 6,000 range. It generally just results in them dying as they don't really do any damage to ships. But they are great at stopping other uh, assault, either assault boats or bomber squads and at taking out torpedoes. Angle of fire, yeah, 360, because they're essentially another ship. They can just fly wherever they need to. So, fighter squadrons automatically react to anything that gets within that 6,000 meter range. The bomber squads and assault boats will fly to the ship that you target, as long as they're within that 12,000. So, I have a preference for bombers myself. They fly through shields, so light torps, they ignore them, and then they'll hit the enemy and they can do quite a significant amount of damage here we're getting two bays so we are getting two squadrons sent at a time assault boats they have their use um, they perform assault actions so as mentioned before for our boarding you'll get those same sort of results and that'll come down to personal preference as to whether you think it's worth it and then we have the Gothic. So Gothic are lance based. So all lances along our side, along our broadside. And again, some heavy launch torpedoes. Same stats up here for our hull and shield and such as it will be for all of these ships. The only real difference between them is the weapon loadout. So our Dominator. Dominated comes with macro batteries, fairly standard, but this has the Nova Cannon. So, the Nova Cannon. This is listed as one of the positives for the Imperial Navy. As it says there, area of ex attack, effect, attack. Very good at uh, going against uh, escort ships, as you saw with them. They have a weakness to area of effect attack, but as it states there, it is in precise so essentially you'll click on a spot inside of that 90 degree arc inside of between the ranges of 6,000 and 25,000 
Yeah, except it'll then randomly move in a direction. Now, it won't be too far from where you aim in general. Uh, but, yeah, it... You could end up completely missing all ships. It's a very hit or miss weapon. When it does hit though, I've taken out ships from uh, some of the weaker ships. As you see there, it does 200 damage. You know, you've got, got some of the weaker ships, like Eldar for instance, that don't have a lot of hold points to start with. And you can just watch half of their health disappear in one go. And against escort ships, as long as their shields aren't up, you can take them out entirely. So this can be a good mix with uh, one of the bombs, which gets rid of shields. So that's the Dominator. The Tyrant. So what's it got? Again, our Prow Heavy Torpedo Launchers, Macro Battery, but this is augmented. As you can see, we only have two of them, whereas our others have had four. So, what's the other two? Plasma macro batteries. So, as you can see, these have a longer range of 12,000. So, if you just do, start doing the quick comparison. Four attacks at 18 damage with a 12 second cooldown. Four attacks at 15 damage with a 12 second cooldown. And our critical chance is on it. It's actually lower. It's 4.5 for a macro. And it's 3.75 for our plasmas. It's that longer range which is positive for these. In saying that, I they're not going to be overly useful to you here, as you really want to be in range for using both, which means you're still going to be at six. And they do, as we see, do a little bit less damage have that slightly lower critical chance. I just personally don't have a liking for them. I'd rather just run the Dominator and have my Nova Cannon instead. And for three points, I feel it's worth it. Then our final one, the Lunar. So the Lunar here is sort of a bit more of an all-rounder. So again, we have the Torps, then we split our broadsides between Macros and Lancers. So this pretty much means that I can both deal with shields relatively well, and then once the shields are down, the lancers are gonna go through their armor. I tend to like using uh, lunars, which is why I have one, as my secondary cruiser. So I have a dominator. Nova cannon can be useful, despite the randomness of the actual Nova cannon itself. And then macro batteries, which are just generally good all round weapons. And a Gothic Lancers. This is for when I'm coming up against things like Space Marines, uh, Orcs to a degree, which you really want to be chewing through their armor. The Lunar just provides that nice backup of giving both. So I can take it as a secondary no matter what type of force I'm coming up against, and it will generally do fairly well. In saying that, obviously, because it's not specialized, it's not as powerful as taking one of these over the other. Right, so that's the cruisers. Nothing special, no new orders, same traits as usual, and we just went through all of the rest of it. So then we have our battle cruisers. So as you can see, pretty much the same as a cruiser. The difference is they come with top mounted weapons. So we've got our broadsides, our prow, and now we have some turrets on top. So again though, we have two. So I only have the overlords, so we'll go in here to have a look at both of them. So, hull of 800, shield 200, speed of 150, rotation of 10. Detection 5, troop value 60, 15 turrets, so a couple more turrets. Armor, again that's 75, 50, 50, which is standard for the Imperium. So, the Overlord weapon loadout. We have plasma macro batteries. Already discussed plasmas over normal. So, as you see here though, we get the full loadout. It makes, in my mind anyhow, it makes the it better as I can sit at 12 and I'll be hitting with all my stuff. Including these, so our lance turrets, which also have that 12,000 range. They also have that 270 degree 
arc, which makes them very good at hitting ships all around you. So even if you have to, even if you have to start heading towards the ship because you're chasing it because it's running away, you'll still at least be hitting with these. And now we're up to six torpedoes launched from our torpedo launcher. So as you can see, we're just getting that increase as we go up in our classes. Right, and then the Mars pattern. Again, same stats at the top here. And our weapon loadout, though, is a little bit different. So this comes with a Nova Cannon. We've already discussed that. It also comes with Lance turrets. Nor just some heavy macro battery so the only real difference here is we get a range of 9,000 versus our 6,000 and ordnance launches we already dis discussed the different types of ordnance so yeah that is the only difference between our two types and as you can see overall that equates to an eight point difference right so our final class of ship the battleship these things are big, as you can see. So, again though, we get a bit of a choice. So we have the Retribution. So now we have six plasma macro batteries, three lance turrets, and a torpedo launcher launching eight torpedoes. Now, the other thing with these is hull integrity, 1200, shield, 400, speed, 150, rotation, fire. So they are quite slow to turn. Detection 5000, troop value 60, turrets again, a couple more as we've gone up in a class size. Armor, standard Imperial armor layout. So as you can see, I've gone the Retribution. Our other one though is the Emperor. So six point difference, what do you get for this six points? Well, you get ordnance launches and you get four of them. This does mean you are getting four squadrons of each. This can actually be a relatively large amount of damage, but it's on an equally high cooldown of 60 seconds, which means for those 60 seconds, you're getting some heavy plasma macro batteries and just some heavy macro turrets. Fairly standard. I personally have a preference for the plasma the normal plasma macros and a lot and a lot of them for those of you who were paying attention you'll notice that the normal plasma macros are four attacks at 15 damage our heavies are four attacks at 18 damage so you're like well hang on a sec wouldn't this balance out no it doesn't i have done the maths and there is about a 40 uh, point or points of damage difference between the two so I just prefer the more consistent and constant uh, damage from these, although obviously they do have the accuracy. But in saying that, ordnance can be shot down, so yeah. Now you notice the other th real big difference here though is that the Emperor also comes with a detection range of 10,000. Uh, you can kind of see it here in the picture, it has these antennas and stuff hanging off the front of it and that's what's giving it that it also has a slower speed though of 112 so there are actually some proper differences here unlike most of our other classes where all this was the same we actually have some differences now i personally tend to set the sit the retribution at that 12 maybe nine depending on what i'm fighting or what the the battle type is the emperor having that detection of 10 though can be really useful because that means with an upgrade you can get it to above 12 which is the maximum range of its squadrons this has benefits but anyhow that'll come down a lot of that will come down to personal but we'll talk about some of the stuff that can happen anyhow in future videos so there it is, our look over all the different ships available to the Imperium. I hope this was helpful to you, and I hope you join us for the next video, where I'll go through the different upgrades, skills, and favours, as well as talking a little bit about the crew in another video.